Hi, this is Rogers Redding, National Coordinator of Football Officials. I want to welcome you to week nine of our game video reviews. Hard to believe we're moving through the second half of the season now, week nine. We're having a good year. Uh, just continue to do your jobs well. Continue to prepare well for the games. And we hope these videos will help you as you prepare for your upcoming games and as you get ready for the rest of the season. Okay, let's get to the plays. We get a good call for an illegal blindside block. Watch the receiver to the right side of the formation in the backfield, number 80. He circles back and attacks with forcible contact from the blind side against the defender, so this is a good call. You can see this on the line feed. You get a better look of it on the replay. It's a good call. Good job by the referee to emphasize this is an illegal blindside block. That is the correct announcement to make. So good call and good announcement. Good job overall. Illegal blindside block, offense number 80. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Here's another example of how tough it is to make calls of catch-no-catch no catch on these pass plays. This is a play very close to the sideline. And you can see on the replay that the receiver pins the ball to his shoulder with his hand. He rolls over. The ball does touch the ground, but the ground does not cause the ball to move out of his possession. And so this is a good call for a catch and a good job by the receiver to maintain control of the ball. He does complete the process of the catch, so this is a completed pass. This is a good call for offside by the defense. You can see that the defensive tackle jumps into the neutral zone, causing a reaction by the offensive lineman. So this is correctly ruled as offside against the defense. Offside. Defense number two coming into the neutral zone, causing the offense to move. Yep, Five exactly. yard penalty remains first down. We get a good call from our referee for roughing the passer on this play. You can see that as the passer releases the ball, two players hit him. The second one comes in. Both of these are unnecessary, but certainly the second one is quite late. So good job to get this. Also correctly enforced by tacking this on at the end of the run. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 12. It's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. We see a good call for holding by the left offensive tackle on this pass play. Now, this is not a big-time hole, but you can see that the offensive player grabs the jersey and, and restricts the defender from getting to the quarterback, so this is a good call. It's not a takedown, but it is a grab and restrict, and so we want these call. Good job. Holding offense, number 75. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. We get a good call for defensive pass interference here. Remember, the rule is that there must be an obvious intent to impede the player from getting to the ball, and that's what we have here. So good job to get this pass interference foul. Pass interference. Defense, number 16. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. We get a flag for roughing the kicker on this punt. You can see that the kicker does get hit hard, However, the player that hits him actually gets blocked into him. So there should be no foul here. You can see that the center judge and the referee are discussing this, and perhaps the referee felt like that the kicker would have been hit anyway. But as it appears here, there should be no foul because the player who contacted the kicker was actually blocked into him. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. Number 26. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Here we get a flag for roughing the passer because of a low hit on the passer. This is a textbook example of this play, and this is a good call. You can see that the defender comes in and goes very low, hits, a, hits the uh, passer below the knee, and that's exactly what we want to get called. So this is a good call. You can see on the replay why this rule is in place, because it is a very dangerous play. So good job to get this foul. We have a good job by our referee to make this rough in the passer call. You can see that as the passer releases the ball, the player takes a couple of steps, makes no attempts to stop, drives right into the passer, knocks him to the ground. So good call, rough in the passer. Personal foul, rough in the passer, defense, 
number 42. 50-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. We get a flag for a horse collar tackle on this play, but look closely at this. You can see that the player grabs at the back at the numbers below the nameplate area, not up in the nameplate area, and certainly not at the collar. There's a brief tug perhaps at the shoulder, but again, not inside the collar. So this is not a foul. Now on the line feed, it looks at first like it might be a foul, but the view that we get from the back and the view that the calling official has shows that the tackler grabs the ball carrier at the numbers and not in the nameplate area or above that. So no foul. Lost Robertson Personal tonight foul. Horse and Poche Olympic. Defense number three, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. We get a call of defensive pass interference on this play, but the foul is not there. Remember that the rule requires that there be an obvious intent to impede the receiver from getting to the ball and we just don't have that on this play. There's a little bit of contact, no doubt, but this is not defensive pass interference, and this flag should have been waved off. Pass interference. Defense number seven. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Among the most difficult calls officials had to make, both on the field and in the replay booth, are catch, no catch with regard to forward passes. And this play gives us a good example. On the line feed, it looks like it might be a catch, and that's what's ruled on the field. But you can see in the replay that, in fact, the receiver never gets control of the ball. He's still juggling it as he goes out of bounds. He does not gain control and then do something common to the game. So this is correctly reversed to an incomplete pass by instant replay. After review, the receiver never gained full control of the pass. Of course, an incomplete pass. On this play, we get a correct call of a false start for a snap infraction. This is kind of an unusual snap infraction. Most often, you'll see the snapper sort of double clutch the ball. But in this case, he sort of starts to move it, and the ball slips out of his hand and rolls away from him. So this is correctly ruled as a false start for a snap infraction. Snap infraction. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Here we get a good call for defensive pass interference on this pass into the end zone. You can see that the defender grabs and pushes the receiver away from the ball, so this is a good call. Now we sure want to get the obvious ones, and this is in that category, so good job to get this obvious defensive pass interference foul. We've got his linebacker and Zach Bond defense, trying to... Number 56, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. On this kickoff, you're going to see a couple of places where we have possible wedge blocks. We've circled these for you, and you get a better look from the end zone shot. But you can see that in the front line, at about the 45-yard line, a couple of players come close together for the purpose of blocking. And then further back on the 30-yard line, a couple of players again come shoulder to shoulder and move forward to block. The one at the 45 is a little less likely to be a wedge block because it looks more like a classic double team and the players are not exactly aligned shoulder to shoulder. The one at the 30-yard line is an illegal wedge. We should have had a flag down for this one. 